Hello, YouTube. Let's face it, space is a risky business. I always considered every launch a barely controlled explosion. Aaron Cohen, NASA Administrator. Welcome to Rogue System. This is a game about space. Uh, I'm excited about it because I just bought it. Um, it looks like kind of like Kerbal Space Program type thing, so. Uh, let's get into it. These videos are going to be uh, super raw. Like, probably some of the rawest videos you've ever seen in your entire life. There's going to be no editing. There's going to be nothing, because I just don't know how to do anything. You know, I'm not like a like a Hollywood video editor. Like, I don't even feel like going through all of the, um, going through all of the, uh, you know, tutorials and stuff to learn a lot of the editing software and turning up the gain and all that. So bear with me. Become a bear with me. Become a grizzly bear. Tutorial one, introduction. This is where we're starting. Let's see. Welcome to Rogue System. In this first tutorial, you will be introduced to basic movement controls and ship interaction. We'll also give you a brief overview of WIP version of the Flying Fox service vehicle. Feel free to take your time and look around. Your ship is currently in a stable orbit, so there's no need to rush. All right. So let's. Dude. I, I don't know what I'm in for. I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. I think my screen's starting to get a little red. Because I've got an amazing little app called... Uh, crap. I can't get out of this. I have an amazing app called... Whoa, YouTube. Enjoy. Enjoy. Lux. Damn it, Lux. Why are you making my whole freaking screen red in the middle of a video? Whatever. You're going to deal with the red screen because I can't, I can't reach Lux. Damn it. Turn off. Turn off. Okay. Whoa. Stop it, please. What's going on? Let's try to rotate. Man, I feel like I'm already in space. I'm just in the ship and I'm rotating around. Okay, I'm moving my mouse across as fast as I can. Oh, okay, we've stabilized our body. Whoa, and I can move. This is so cool. Whoa, I wonder what I, I wonder what I look like right now. There's the pilot seat. This is so disorienting and cool. I really wish that um, the mouse was more sensitive. So, let's make the FPS mouse more sensitive. Hmm, I bet you I can. That would be super ridiculous, wouldn't it? I don't, I don't actually think I can. Okay, let's, dang it. During tutorials, if you see continue, use tutorial advance to continue, E by default. Okay. You can also go back to the previous message using tutorial previous, Q by default. Okay. During tutorials, if you see continue, all right, got it. Oh, I was supposed to press E. <laughs> All right, Q goes backwards. Okay, come on, focus, man, focus. Use your mouse to look around. If you've enabled head tracking, you can turn your head. So that's like some virtual reality crap. I don't have any of that gear. To your left and right are doorways that lead to adjoining rooms. They are not complete and inaccessible at this time. Which is good, I don't wanna get crushed. By default, you can float around using the typical WASDs. Left control will move you down and shift moves you up. You always move relative to where you're looking. 
Just, that's like Kerbal Space Program. Wow, when you're doing an EVA. The small dot in your view is your, how do you rotate your view though? Oh crap, that's what I wanna know. Um, the small dot in your view is your look at point. When it is over something, you can interact with the item's help tip. Oh, you can interact with the item's help tip will appear under it. Yeah, that's like some broken English right there. You can use the item you're looking at with the use item command, left mouse button by default. The use item. Okay, so left mouse button, that's the primary mouse button in my mind. Move to the pilot's seat and hoover the look at it over it. Sit down when you are ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready, Freddy. Okay, I can do this. Oof, I'm in the pilot seat. Sweet. Look at all these buttons. This is a very, this is a very very um tiny little ship. Not a lot going on here. It's always a good idea to save to safe the seat when you're in it. It will lower the restraint and keep you secure doing maneuvering. So the button is on the left overhead on the CCM panel. Oh, look at that. What the hell does that do? Oh, it locks me in. That's so cool. Look at that. Oh, man. That's not space. Depending on your settings, you may need to zoom in for smaller text. Okay. Man, I got 1080p. I don't need to zoom in. Whoa! Okay. As you can see, the ship has no windows. Instead, oh, there's no windows. Man, what a crappy ship. It's, this is my exterior view right here. The VMS. To enable the VMS, use the see-through multifunctional display. This is an MFD, folks. If anyone has played Orbiter, you are very familiar with these things. MFD is fancy talk for a computer screen that you can click around and stuff. Okay, simply look at the displays mode button and select it. The VMS sub mode should be selected by default. What? Okay, viewport monitor system. That's my phone. This is raw footage. This is so raw. This is like National Geographic uncut. So you're gonna hear stuff like that, okay? I know a lot of you YouTubers aren't used to that, but that's what it's gonna be, okay? This isn't PewDiePie. This isn't, this isn't like some hyper-edited Hollywood footage this is just a dude in his mom's basement with a with a with a USB microphone and a copy of Shadowplay. That's all this is. It might might be all that it's ever gonna be. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, VMS sub mode should be selected by default. Enable VMS with the system power button near the center of the MFD. Where's the system power button? Oh, it's this middle one. I see. System states, anti-fog status, system power, view mode, info modes, all of these. So let's Turn on the system power. Oh, look at that. It gives me a nice little screen all over the front of my spaceship. That's probably more realistic because I don't think glass does very well in a vacuum. Once warmed and active, VMS offers a large field of view without compromising safety. So people can shoot rockets at me and I'll just be impervious. <clears throat> HUD elements are easily projected to keep vital information directly in your line of sight. Mm. 
Yes, I see. That's like a retrograde from Kerbal Space Program. That's a prograde. That's forward. It's good to know. Fault acknowledge. Okay. Invert tank level low. Well, I already like this game. It was already worth the $30 I paid for it. I'm already happy about it. It's like a really nice orbiter cockpit. Cock cockpit. Cockpit sounds so dirty, doesn't it? How did they ever think of that one? It's a pit where you put a cock. I guess that makes me the cock and I'm in a pit. HUD elements are easily projected. Got it. Be warned, VMS monitors can be damaged. It's possible to find yourself flying instruments only. That sounds exciting. Have a look at some of the other MFD pages. Using the upper and lower page buttons. When ready, select navigation mode. I gotta process that for a second. Man, this is like challenging my reading comprehension to the max. What does it mean? Multifunctional display. I need to look at some of the other pages. Okay, and then press navigation mode. Symbology opacity. Oh, so that I can change how opacity I want that to be. Oh, pace. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, navigation mode. Okay, let's try system info. Not yet implemented. You know, I hope this game takes off and just changes the world of gaming. I hope it takes off like Angry Birds and it's on everyone's phone and they become millionaires. Because this is so sick. Seriously. Okay. Um, displays. Uh, viewport monitor system VMS everything's got an acronym world of acronyms that's what they could have called this game system states anti-fog status system power this is what we've already seen isn't it declutter exit dock navigation into dock Track. E A slash D ports. Probably docking, I'm guessing. Port available. Alright. EXC port. I don't want to mess with those. Okay, I'll mess with them. Aft port. I don't think you can actually um I don't think you can actually do anything. Like, you can't control the ship through the MFD. It just gives you information and tools and stuff. I think if you want to... Whoa. Look at that. What am I even orbiting? Time to periapsis. 30 minutes. 30... Yeah, 30 minutes. I don't really know what true anomaly means. Zenith angle 90. Okay. Allow the purge. Enable the purge. No, not yet. Not yet. These textures are beautiful. Invert tank level low. Hmm. Maybe this is like a warning panel right here. Oh, okay, yeah, this is... You press crap like this, and then your ship's gonna blow up. You know, this is like... This is the meat of it. This is all these switches um, allow you to control the ship. I think that's kind of, that feels so old school, you know? It feels just like so 21st century to have all these switches everywhere. You would think that they would have all this stuff on a computer monitor, you know, with a keyboard and a, and a mouse right here. But nope, all these switches and stuff. It's interesting. Um... You know, these are weight. This is extra weight. This is gonna. This takes delta V right here. All these panels and switches. Not to mention all the energy to light it up. 
So yeah, we got bladders, we got valves, we got everything going on here, which is great. These things, these are probably thrusters. This is maybe my brakes, I don't know. I wonder how this game handles re-entry. Hmm. Comms. What the freak? Maybe like if this game ever becomes multiplayer and you can communicate with other people using comms or whatever. That's cool, but... Mm, yeah. Sensors. Okay, here's what I'm used to looking at. Kerbal Space Program. Increase scale. Decrease scale. Hmm. It doesn't seem to do much. Select nearest. Select previous. Select next. So there's nothing going on. This is like if there's enemies around, you can shoot them and stuff. But there's no enemies around. Weapons not implemented. You know, that's okay. It took... How long did it take them to make K KSP? It took them years. Like, it's been out for like a decade and a half now, it seems. You know, this, is, this isn't Flappy Birds. This isn't Angry Birds. This is a real game. This is a, this is a man's game right here, and and um, you know you don't make a game like this overnight. That's for sure. All this stuff's got to be made new. You know, defensive, not yet implemented. That's okay. <sighs> Navigation. You'll be working with navigation and other MFD modes soon. No matter how advanced a ship is, it must have hard controls to allow the pilot to interact with critical systems in emergencies. We'll finish up this overview with a quick tour of these manual controls and the systems they manage. I guess that explains why not everything is just a display and a touch screen or whatever on the right overhead is the electric control systems panel so this is all my electric crap what the freak does that do okay cool um at the lower portion of ECS you'll find battery management system controls Batteries are your last source of power. Keep them charged. Okay. I'll keep them charged, baby. I'll keep them nice and charged for you, baby. Above that is the FCM. Fuel cell management portion of ECS. So yeah, I guess that means electric control system. What does FCS mean, though? Oh, fuel cell systems. Fuel cells provide power through a chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidizer. Wow. Yeah, we have those in Kerbal Space Program, too. Huh. I guess it's like a generator. The power lasts as long as the fuel reactant sources do. From time to time, fuel cells must be purged to remove contaminants. So that explains the whole purge thingy. So from time to time, I'm going to need to press that button. Auto on. Okay. Auto off. Auto on. Finally is ECS itself. Sources of power send their output into the ECS so that it can be distributed to other systems. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hmm. 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 Okay. I probably shouldn't screw with these. An ECS typically has a primary and secondary system bus, as well as a high voltage main bus for systems that have large power needs. Hmm. 
Okay. I don't really understand that. I guess these things just have to bust. I guess bust, what the heck's a bus? I guess it's like a cord, like a system of moving it around or something. On the left overhead, you'll find the life support system. Communications, comms, and poor ship manager system panels. Man, world of acronyms, man. World of acronyms. W-O-A. It looks like everything's going good. We got lots of pry. We got 100% lick, which is good. Can I press this? I can't press it. Okay. L-S-S. Gives you manual control over consumables, tanks, atmosphere, scrubbers, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Good. I want to keep it nice and cool in here. Unlike my room. It's burning in my room right now. I got the air conditioner turned off because I don't want to, I don't want to troll you guys with my AC. You know what I mean? You're also provided information on the current livable atmosphere within the crew cabin. Okay. I guess it means it's all good. Above LSS, this is the LSS, the life, the life thing, okay, is the comms panel. And its function is to provide ship to ship comms, which is good. Not yet implemented, but it's going to be so amazing when it is, I'm sure. It also receives localization data for use in rendezvous and docking maneuvers. Great. It also receives... So it's useful for docking and crap. Got it. While most of the ship... While most of the systems... Um, while most of the system is controlled via the multifunctional display... Oh, I remembered it comms page the basic functions can be found here including the emergency beacon which is probably going to be the most important thing for me what did it do okay that's cool let's leave that safety on hmm at the top left what if we leave this on okay let's just leave on the emergency beacon because I should not be... Oh, look at that. Looks like we've got... Some kind of gas giant we're orbiting. Looks like a gas giant to me. Looks like a salmon and lox. I declare this planet to be... The planet of lox and salmon. I just want to take that planet and put it on a bagel. Spread it with a butter knife all over. Mmm. <laughs> making me hungry all right the top of the left overhead is the CCM panel I'm not familiar with this at all what the heck is this oh that lets me get out of my damn seat what's the lock I can't even touch that anti-g recline oh, I think this oh, controls a lot of the lights ooh sweet we get some lights here we don't need things so dark all the time. We do want instrument lights, though. I like that, actually. I like that you can control the lights and that everything... This is what real life is like. This is what it's like. It's, it's not Star Trek. It's not go to warp. It's flip the freaking switches and orbit the salmon planet. That's real space travel. I think that's a moon, is it? What are these little dots? Hmm. What is this? Planets, I guess. Not very interesting names. They're all called Yuis. <clears throat> At the top left overhead... Got it. Okay. CCM. CSSM, I mean. Okay, CSSM. I wonder what that stands for. Allows you to interact with basic ship systems, such as lighting, hatches, and landing skids, if the ship is so equipped. Hmm. 
I doubt this has landing skids. Just saying. Many systems feed their data into the CSSM for collection and monitoring by the ship's onboard intelligence. SOI. Hmm. I'm going to wear out my middle mouse button. That's what you have to press to zoom in. I might want to rebind that one. I don't want to mess up my sick gaming mouse. Okay, SOI stands for Ships Onboard Intelligence. Later, SOI will take on co-pilot duties to help you manage your ship by handling the more tedious functions, if you like. I do like. Let's look at the lower left console next. Hmm. This is the lower left console. This is the reactant core management panel. God, it probably took them years just to design these panels, man. Look at how many buttons are on them. This is the meat of it right here. This is the hot dog in between the bun. The reactant core contains all the consumables, both volatile and inert, that the ship needs to operate. That's good. Where do I pee out of? That's the only thing this game's missing, is a hole to pee out of and poop out of. Um, not to be vulgar, but, I mean, come on, that's, that's space, man. That's space. The reactant core can be ejected in case of emergency. For this reason, consumables for the life support system are stored elsewhere. That's good. That's good to hear. So I can I can get rid of it. How do I do that though? Uh, right here. What do I have to do? Enable core jettison. Oh shit! Stop it! Cancel. Why is everything flashing red? How can I know? I shouldn't have done that. Ah, whatever. Come on, quit your knockoff with the red light stuff. How do you turn it off? I'm guessing it's probably up here. Stop making Open the pod bay doors, Hal. No, stop it. Okay, that's probably going to... It's getting hot in the system. Jeez. Vent it! Fire it! Come on! Damn, I don't like that temperature. Uh, we're just going to continue with the tutorial. Okay. The temperature management system panel allows the pilot to manually handle waste, heat, disposal, and retention if needed. Okay, I'm going to need to probably manipulate some of this crap. Damn it. Vent it. Both loops. Vent it. Oh, crap. Stop it. Don't vent. Stop it. Okay. We shouldn't have a core. I hope you guys enjoy that noise because it's not going anywhere. Heat energy is dissipated via, via, however you want to say that, various types of radiators, passive heat pipes, as well as the active laser cooling system. Usually you use lasers to heat things up, not cool them down. 
What kind of crazy lasers are they using? All right. Select the exterior orbit camera, F2 by default, and you can see the radiators for both cooling loops in their deployed state. Damn it. I'm sick of that sound. You cannot stop the audio or anything. There's the options do not work when you're in this. This video is is, is freaking going downhill fast. If anybody watches this video, I feel sorry for them. Turn it off right now. You've already wasted enough of your time. Go play with your kids. Go play with your dog and your wife and all that. Oh crap. Both coolant tanks are empty. No voltage to the buses. RCM's failing. The SOI is laughing at me. Not available. I shouldn't have done that. Is there no way to get that damn core back? Hmm. We're doomed. Oh. Oh, man. That's scary. Where's the... Okay. I hope I have life support, though. It's just me and this lonely spaceship. I probably can't even get out of this stupid seat. Hmm. Let me out. Let me out of the seat. Wasn't there another panel? Come on, get me out. Get me. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Muscle out. Muscle out. Use your space muscles. Oh. I'm locked in like a freaking. I get six flags or something, and I can't get it off me. I think this is it. Hopefully someone heard our distress beacons. I mean, to be honest, I didn't think that that was going to do anything. I, I thought that you had to have a key or something in order to eject the core. Not just, you know flip a little thing and then click it and then all hell breaks loose. I didn't know it was going to be like that. This game did not warn me. This game overestimated my abilities as a space pilot. Welp. I guess that's it for this video. Um... Next time, you'll see me um, probably doing tutorial two, you know, with a little bit more knowledge under my belt. Um, I'm not going to make you guys sit through this tutorial again. I say you guys as if people are actually watching this, when really it's just me sitting alone in a cold, dark spaceship, orbiting a pink gas giant alone in space not even a teddy bear to cuddle stuck in a amusement park roller coaster seat staring at a gray slab in front of my face this is space folks this is how it is <laughs>